Welcome to the Brand Sandwood One Shop. On this clarinet, the B flat and C trill keys are bad. I'm going to open those up. You can see that the felt is completely missing on the C trill key. On the B flat trill key, the skin is ripped, so air is going to leak out of that, so that pad needs to be replaced too. I'm going to start by taking the keys off. On most clarinets, if you're going to get these keys off, you also need to get the other side keys off. So now I have all of the keys off, so I can get at these keys. First I need to remove the old pads, so I heat that up for about three seconds and then those pop right out usually. If you do not have one of these torches, you can just pull the pads out with a small screwdriver. Here are some of my clarinet pads. There are a lot of different types of clarinet pads and all of them will work. I like the ones with the hard pressed felt. Those seem to work a lot better. The hard pressed felt gives you a flat, harder surface, so it's harder to level the pad onto the tone hole. But once you get it level onto the tone hole, then it seats a lot better and gives the clarinet a lot better performance. This clarinet is a Bundy, so it's going to get the 10 millimeter pads. The 9.5 millimeter pad is too small. It moves around in there too much. And then the 10.5 millimeter pad is too large. Then it hangs out over the edge of the pad cup and then it will get frayed easier. So you want to use the right size, which in this case is the 10 millimeter pads. Just like with the pads, there are a lot of different types of glue you can use. I'm going to show you just two of them. This is hot glue and it's like the type used for crafting and it's used in these hot glue guns. What I do is I take a stick of it and then I cut it lengthwise with a razor and then I end up with a half of a stick like that and those are easier to work with. For hot glue you need a torch or some other device that will heat up the pad cup so that you can level the pad. The other type is a liquid shellac, and I keep it in a film canister. I use liquid shellac on saxophone pads, but on clarinets I use the hot glue. Again, both of the ways will work, it's just what you prefer. You can get this type of liquid shellac from Furry's Tools. They sell it in a little container. These work well if you're outside of the shop and you need to do an emergency repair. These pad cups are flat, so they are going to get less glue than a pad cup like this that is conical on the top. I'm going to install one pad with a liquid shellac and the other one with a hot glue. So for the liquid shellac, you just put a little bit onto the back of the pad and put it into the pad cup. When you're done with that, level it with the pad leveling tool as good as you can. On the hot glue, since the pad is going to be getting warm, it may expand. So what I'm going to do is poke a small hole right on the side of the pad, and that will let out any of the air if the air pressure builds up, so it will not puff up when it gets heated. So now I'm going to turn on the torch and get the glue warmed up and melted and put some on there. That's probably about enough. Then I'm going to warm up the pad cup and put that in there. And then I'm going to level the pad. If there's any excess glue on that, you can just clean that off. The liquid shellac takes several minutes to dry, so while that is still wet, I can level the pad. Now I'm going to use my feeler gauge. I made a video on how to make one of these, and I'm going to leave a link to that video in the description below. And now what I'm doing is I'm putting the end of the feeler gauge underneath each side of the pad. I'm going around and I'm seeing where the pad sits on the tone hull. And I can feel here that the feeler gauge comes out easily. And on this side, it comes out easily also. Here you have to pull a little harder to get the feeler gauge out. And on this side, I have to tug lightly to get the feeler gauge out. So I know that the pad is seating heavily on this side, and it is light on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pad leveling tool, and I'm going to uh, level the pad. I'm going to bring it this way just a little bit, and then I'm going to use my feeler gauge again and see if I corrected it, made it better, or made it worse. And let's see, it looks like it needs to come this way a little bit farther, so I'm going to continue to do that. And I'm going to keep doing this until the pad is level and it seats evenly on the tone hole. Okay, now I've gone a little too far. 
So I'm going to go back that way, and it needs to go a little bit down too. So I'm going to level the pad in that direction. I leveled the pad, and now the feeler gauge pulls out with an even amount of pressure all the way around the pad. This pad has been leveled and now it is done. Since this has the liquid shellac, I need to wait for that to dry. So I'm just going to leave this alone and let it dry. For the pad with the hot glue, I need to heat that up to melt the glue every time I adjust the pad. So I'm going to see which direction the pad needs to go. The pad seat's heavy on this side, on the top, and on the bottom, but in the back, it is very light. So I'm going to have to adjust the pad and tilt it in that direction. I'm going to use the torch to heat it up. If you're not careful, you can burn the side of the body and it leaves little bubbles in the plastic. But if you are very careful, the torch works very well and very fast. So I'm going to heat that up. And that's about all the time it takes, about two to three seconds. And then I'm going to adjust that. Maybe I did not heat that up quite enough. I don't think it moved at all. So I'm going to push that in the direction it needs to go. And then I'm going to use the feeler gauge again. Okay, it's pretty close. I need to go this way a little bit further, so I'm going to heat it up again. And I will see if that works this time. And you just need to do this until the pad is level. And I think it is good. Yes, that is good. So this pad is also done. Some people like to seat the clarinet pads when they're done, and that's where you put a clamp on it to hold it down for a little while. And what that does is it puts a sharp crease in the pad, but usually that is not necessary. If you get the pad level in the first place, it's going to seal better without the seat in the pad. So I suggest that you do not seat the pad. After you're done leveling it, it should be good. And one more thing to note, because the register key gets a lot of moisture on it, it is a good idea to use a cork pad on there if you have one available. When you're done replacing the pads, you want to check for leaks, so cover up all the holes with your fingers, and then cover up the bottom with your hand, and then blow on the clarinet. But of course you want to clean it first before you do this. And there are no leaks in this clarinet, so it is finished. I hope this video has been helpful. Look in the description below for links to related videos and please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.